from the base of Mont Ventoux. Welcome to the GCN show. From the Paso de Jao on the transcontinental race. Welcome to the GCN show. From Victoria Beach, Manitoba, Canada. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Coming up, how exactly were the Olympic Games road races won? And was that course a little bit too dangerous? Yeah, we've got some seriously cool tech this week. The most important rider transfers. We've got hacks and bodges that vary from the sublime to the ridiculous, and all of our usuals as well. And there's added Pokemon as well, just for oh, yeah. It's time now for Caption of the Week. This was last week's photo, if you remember. Very memorable, actually, because that looks particularly nasty. Painful, and even after a week, we still don't know what's going to happen. But the winner is Matthew Fork with this one, Bucking Brompton. Pretty good. It's actually. not bad, that, is it? That is pretty good. We yeah. do wonder. Well, and if you're the man in the picture, please get in touch because we'll send you a bottle. But Matthew, please get in touch because we'll send you this limited edition Camelback Juicy and Beadon. And these are not available anywhere else apart from in my hand. Yeah, not for sale is what you're trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Uh, right, this week's photo is this one of Fabian Cancellara crossing the line at the Olympic Games. We shall get you started. Uh, wow, drop a seat post really are the future. And as you can see, I'm not even saying that tongue in cheek. Dan took an hour to think of that. But it's golden, definitely worth. They will never be again. Yeah, setting the bar extremely low. <laughs> Leave your captions in the comment section down below. The men's and women's road races in Rio were marked by two things, some thrilling racing and some severe crashes. Yeah, the form was very much down to a beautiful and varied course which covered all sorts of terrain. The fact that they were quite small team size and of course the way that the riders actually raced the event itself. And the latter was down to one particularly treacherous descent which saw the hopes end for some genuine medal contenders. Yeah, in the men's race we lost Richie Port, Sergio Renault and Vincenzo Nibli, all with fractured bones. And then in the women's event, Anna Marie van Vluten looked like she had the race sewn up until a particularly nasty crash saw her lying unconscious in the gutter. Yeah, that crash had me and the vast majority of people watching in a state of shock. But thankfully, the, her injuries aren't quite as bad as we originally thought when we saw her lying still at the side of the road. Yeah, it does sound nasty, but as you said, not quite as nasty as it yeah. looks like it potentially could have been. Right, how though exactly were both races won? Well, they did both follow quite a similar pattern in that there was some attrition towards the start of it, i.e. more riders going out the back than attacking off the front. Then ultimately, Mara Abbott found herself solo off the front after that horrific crash from Van Vluten. And similarly in the men's race, Mike had found himself off the front in the closing kilometres as well after Nibali and Anau crashed. They both agonisingly got caught very close to the line, leaving Greg van Avermaet and Anna van der Breggen to take very deserved victories for Belgium and the Netherlands respectively. Yeah, and both gold medal winners limited their losses on that final climb, didn't they? And then both crucially made sure that they descended that final descent safely. And then both were counting on the fact that they had the fastest sprints in their respective groups. We do think though, that because Annemiek van Vluten looked like she had that gold medal sewn up, that there was perhaps an element of luck in her teammate fighting out for gold medal. But was Van Avermaet as lucky? Well, I don't personally think so, because I have a feeling that that trio of Mike, uh, Nibli and Enal would have started to look at each other enough to slow down and get caught by Van Avermaet behind anyway. I happen to think that they might have stayed away, but that's the beauty of it. We'll never really know, but that's why it was such a thrilling race with a, a wonderful narrative to it. But the question we also need to ask, and that many people have already posed, especially on social media, was that descent too dangerous? We know it's been used before in the test event. We're not aware that there are any crashes there, but with all the discussions, especially this year, in relation to rider safety, you look at the, uh, the bad weather protocol, you look at road furniture, you look at vehicles and races and disc motorbikes, brakes. disc brakes as well, good point. Um, was it? Too dangerous, of course. Well, I don't think so. Now, don't get me wrong, I would never, ever, ever want to see anyone lying at the side of the road having crashed, but I think it's the riders that made it dangerous. You know, if you'd told them all at the top of that descent, just get down to the bottom safely, they all would have done it. But the fact was, you know, Nibali, his tactic was to go as fast as he could because he knows he's one of the best descenders out there, and you know, you roll the dice, or and not. Sometimes, well, yeah, sometimes you crash when you push the limits. So I do wonder whether the descent was okay, but it was the riders that maybe just pushed it a bit far. So perhaps what we've seen, so with so much at stake, and in this case, you know, a gold medal, that riders just took one risk too many. It's not something we'd normally see, perhaps, in a Grand Tour. Yeah. 
I agree with both of you to a point. I think the organisers did a great job with the netting, etc., on the side. But what was really disconcerting for me were those big storm drains yes, down the yeah. edge that, of course, you don't get in many races that the riders do normally. That allows no runoff. And I would have personally gone down there with quite a fear of having my wheel just slip down as that because at that point you can't do anything about There's it. There's no margin for error whatsoever on those, was there? No. Let us know what you guys think, of course, in the comment section down below. Time now for Tech of the Week. Now, you may have heard this tale of a mountain biker in Australia who had a pretty nasty crash, landed on his side, split his iPhone, causing the lithium ion battery to rupture and oozing what I can only call some pretty nasty stuff through his shorts and onto his skin, which left a very, very nasty burn indeed. It did, and I tell you what, it's got us all thinking, that's for sure, because I think all of us carry our phones in our back pockets, oh, don't yeah. we? Which clearly isn't the safest place to do so. And so, although this isn't new tech, it's definitely worth being reminded of. So this is the quad lock mount, which is basically a cover for your phone, but then it's also got a locking mechanism on the back, so you can attach it to your bike. There we go, nice and securely. And to be fair, that's probably a more useful place to sit your phone in your back pocket, given that there's that many apps around that allow you to track your ride map your ride, live tweet your ride, or road race. Swift, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be Pokemon good. Pokemon Go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nessa wouldn't recommend that out on the open road, but you caught any. There's also a 15 yeah. hour speed limit, isn't there, on Pokemon? I think there is, yeah. So yeah. You'd, it'd be a slow ride. Unless you go, maybe if you're really going slowly up a big mountain or something, you might yeah, you'd be all right. Some. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, if you'd like more information on the case, you can go to quadlockcase.com. Now, the Olympics put cycling onto the biggest global stage there is. And cycling manufacturers, of course, know this. So how do they make their products really stand out? Custom paint, that's how. Now, Canyon went for fluorescent green, as did Merida, while Scott went for fluorescent yellow with some nice graphics down the fork as well. They look pretty cool, don't they? Mm, but arguably, the biggest winner was specialised, who went yeah. for heat sensitive paint, meaning that during the race, the paint job on the bikes went quite literally from yellow to orange and back to yellow again. That was a master stroke. Was. Was. Imagine how flabbergasted we'd all have been if they hadn't told us what to expect before the race itself. Oh, I would have messed with your head, wouldn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, the colour change doesn't apply in the UK unless you leave your bike or your helmet <laughs> next true. to the radiator. Along with custom painted frames, we've caught wind of some top secret technology which we believe will be used in the next couple of weeks. Super fast chain rings. Whoa! Yes. Pyramid composite designs have created some track specific chain rings which through a combination of stiffness and super low friction save you around 2 to 3 watts when you're racing around at 50 Whoa. kilometers per hour. Don't forget in the velodrome these kind of improvements are quite easy to track. Yeah, so how have they done it? Well, through automated fibre placement, which is at the absolute cutting edge of carbon fibre technology. You can be forgiven, in fact, for never having heard about it, because these are the first bike components to be made using this manufacturing process. And they've been constructed by the National Composite Centre here in the UK, which is one of only a few places to have these special AFD machines. And most of the machines, in fact, are normally busy building, I don't know, like spaceships and airplanes and stuff like that. And the way they work is by actually laying down individual strips of carbon fibre instead of the more usual kind of laminate sheets of material. And so what it allows is for more complex structures to be made than you would normally be able to do mm. with normal don't manufacturing know why, methods. Don't know why we didn't that think that's yeah. pretty cool. Exactly. And ridiculous. They're even they're quicker to make as well. Yeah. Now they had to order the larger chain rings, you know, pretty early, but the NCC only took about six hours to make them. Now Nobody would comment over this project, unsurprisingly perhaps, but we think some may be delivered around Thursday. Oh, what's mm. going on on Thursday yeah. there? Ladies table tennis. Oh yeah. I'm wow. oh, single, yeah. Mm. Track starts that day as well, actually. It does, yeah, weirdly. It's time to announce the winners of our fantastic physique competition, of which there were four. Do you want a drum roll? Go on then. Winner number one is Kylie. Acoustic. That was just to keep all the carnies there on edge. Well, I'm kind of there, right? Number two is Kit Wing Lamp. So congratulations to you. Well done. And winner number three is Oco Pico. Pause there for all the Ocos out there. And the final winner is Victory. What a wonderful name. That's a sort of a nominative determinism right there. Victory Akinjomo. Well done to you. Yeah, well done to all of you. All you've got to do, or we'll be in touch with you in fact, so all you've got to do is reply to our email with your choice of saddle and shoes and we'll get them sent out to you as soon as possible. Cracking purpose. Which colour shoes do you go for? Black or white? Ooh. White. I do like white. Yeah. But black for the winter maybe. I don't know. 
Oh, it's one of each. No, don't do that, because that's a bit confusing. Just go for one card. It's time for the cycling shorts. The Olympic road races this year were super hard. In fact, in the men's race, just 63 people finished out of 140 starters. So it's understandable that many riders were going to be looking to make their mark in some other way other than winning medals. Hmm. So step forward, perennial GCM favourite, Mr. Dan Craven. Craven. Yeah, not only was Dan arguably the only hipster in the race with the best beard, Sorry, Simon Geschke. But he actually live tweeted whilst he was racing. Can you believe impressive. that? Of course, it wasn't actually him that was doing the tweeting, but rather his partner, Colin, who tweeted in the first person tweets that not only went viral, but also hit the national news here in the UK. Now, a race with more than one hipster, in fact, pretty much full of hipsters, as well as a few other people who think it's quite normal to ride or well, nearly half around the world, was the Transcontinental, which we discussed in last week's show. Now, despite it only being seven or eight days ago, that race has already finished 3,762 kilometres. And overall honours this time went to Christoph Aliart, who covered the distance and get this, eight days, 15 hours, which is mightily that is impressive. Pretty right? swift. Yeah, I tell you what, he's got a very nice bike too. Check this out. He custom nice. steel Jaeger from Belgium. And look, there's not much luggage there, is there? No, he's travelling light, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, look, you can even get your hair dry in one of those bags, could you? No well, I could do, but it would be at the sacrifice of food and drink. <laughs> right, well, that does make the World Tour sound slightly easier than it might do otherwise. But we have to give you news that in 2017, it will be slightly busier than it has been in the past because the UCI have announced that 10 new events will be added starting from next year. So we're going to have some very big top-level teams in the sport from now on. Uh, amongst the stage races that have been added for 2017 are the tours of Turkey, California, California, Qatar and Abu Dhabi. A number of one days have also been added too. Amongst them are Ride London, Omnip Het Newsblad, Dwarsdorf Landen, the Cat 11 Great Roshan Road Race and one more. Strada Bianca, more how can you forget that yeah, mate? You finished in the top 10 there. Oh that's true, that's what I wanted to say. Well given the dramatic growth of the World Tour in particular in 2017, you've got to think about the impact this is going to have on continental teams who at present cannot ride in World Tour events. And one event in particular stands out for me and that's the Tour of California. And that race is the biggest biggest race of the season for many of the US continental teams and without that race they may not actually be in existence so hopefully the UCI will bend the rules a little to allow some of these continental teams to participate in some of these world tour races. Yeah also I think it devalues the winner of the world tour what rider is going to be able it's to do all those races. races to compete in isn't it? Yeah. What we need is like a world cup which yeah. is a novel idea. Good idea. Yeah mm. thanks. Now before we leave cycling shorts, let's just bring it back to the Olympics one last time because there were some pretty high profile celebrities knocking around at the road races. Did you see uh, US Secretary of State John Kerry? Was yeah, there at the start? Oh, apparently yeah. he reads Velo News. Does he? Do you think he subscribes to GCN? I very much doubt it. Oh, it but something check. else that I also heard was that the King and the President of the Netherlands was also going to the Olympic Village. Really? Do you know how they got there? Uh, no. By bike. Mm. Classy. Yeah. The I bet king they said of, high the king of the Netherlands. Well. What's high in uh, Dutch? High? Good dog. Dog. I don't know. Yeah, probably they did say that. Say dog on your ride. Is that right? Yeah. Dog. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. Now first up we have this from Tom Knight who won't let a dislocated elbow get in the way of his training. Check this out. That is pretty good. It does it remind is. me of Matt Heyman at Paris Bay when he had his step past. ladder, wasn't it? Yeah, his step ladder in the garage. But, uh, is it hack or bodge? He's probably a bodge, isn't it? Bodge, I reckon. Bodge, yeah. I reckon, yeah, definitely. Uh, this next one I'm going to say is hack before you've even seen it. Uh, it comes in from Jacob, who's a 17 year old here in the UK. Now, he started commuting to school by bike not that long ago and soon wanted to upgrade his bike, but when he saw the prices of them, he thought, no, I'm going to make my own. So, at a total cost of around £400 for the tubes and everything else that he needed to make his new bike, he came up with this. Whoa, that that's a nice bad. looking bike. See, that's a definite hack. And not surprisingly, he is now yeah. considering a career in frame building. Look yeah. at the lug work on there. Good luck with Good that. Good job. Yeah. All right, now this next one, can you guess what this is? No, well, this is a homemade camera mount. Check it out, look at that. Oh my Diogo goodness. Bergen sent this one in, that is Definitely bodge of the week, but in a very cool way. <laughs> Top level ingenuity yeah. right there. It can bid on both sides. I hope he's got insurance on his phone, because that looks like it might be a little bit, you know, yeah. unstable. Maybe just invest in another elastic band. <laughs> <laughs> well, next up, look at this from Vincent C. Beggs. That's amazing. Spotted along the Mount Vernon Trail on an admittedly sunny day. 
I'll stick with sunscreen. That guy just looks so chilled out. He, he does, but he's not. He's, in the, he's not even in the shade. I tell you what, though, he's not. He's in full sun. He's got little wind mirrors on there as well. That is absolutely wonderful. I tell you what, that, ball, that could be it? good in the UK rain, couldn't it? That? He's also got my shorts yeah, yeah. on from the 1999 as well. Oh yeah. They made more than a couple of pairs of those. Yeah. Yeah. But this is this is this is good. That this, is a genuine hack. This is from Peter H. Pressed a new bottom bracket with a homemade tool. It works fine. I think hack. Just wow, wonder. he's speculating himself, but I would agree. Yeah, a homemade uh, bottom bracket press. Now that would save you a bit of cash. Mm, definitely. We'll keep, keep those hacks and bodges coming. Absolutely. Great fun. Yep. Hashtag GCN hack. Jelly Belly's Lachlan Morton made a daring attack on the final stage of the Tour of Utah to not only win the stage, but take overall honours as well. Now, it had been a thrilling battle for the entire week between him and Andrew Talansky, and it was Talansky who'd been leading the race all the way to the final climb, the fearsome Empire Pass. And this is where Morton made his move, cresting the top of the climb first and with some daring descending skills managing to hold off the field. But it's a fast finishing Adrian Costa of Axion, who actually finished in second overall after a remarkable ride for such a young rider, whilst Talansky held on for third. Mm, quite a talent that Morton, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely, yeah. As well as Costa as well, by the sounds of it. Yeah. Now here's some news that you'll be pleased to hear, Matt, if you haven't done so already. Yeah. Alberto Condor not only has recovered from his injuries that took him out of the Tour de France, but he looks well on track as he heads towards the Vuelta a España. Uh, he actually won the Vuelta a Burgos overall from Ben Hermans, albeit by only a second with Sergio Pardilla of Cacarural in third. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Sure. Now, guys, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Because the transfer season is officially open. Oh, oh, right. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, so, all the rumours and the backstage talks that have been taking place for months on end can be officially confirmed as of August the 1st. So I guess our Claxton is several days late. It's kind of but a week ahead, but it's still kind of going on, yeah. isn't it? Anyway, it's resonating. plenty of good stuff going on and lots of stuff that we haven't even heard rumblings of. Oh, well, yeah. the first of which is Sepp Van Mark. Now, he leaves Lotto NL Yumbo. And actually, he's going back to the team he rode for in 2010 and 2011. A team he rode for in 2011 and 2012. Now, the void that he leaves ba back at Lotto and Yumbo has been filled by JJ Lobato, who moves from Mobistar, and uh, Lars Baum is going from Astana mm. Auto to, also to Lotto and Yumbo. And another significant transfer is young Brit Hugh Carthy, who moves from Cajarural to the American Yeah, that'd be interesting, well. that one. Yeah, Vincenzo Nibli, of course, crashed out of the Olympics. We'll head to the Bahrain Merida cycling team. Mm. Didn't hear anything about that. No, Please, gosh, no. Yeah. Yeah. What, what a secret. Never yeah. expected that at all. Uh, Michael Matthews will head from Orica over to Giant Alpecin. And in terms of some other signings as well, we've got a couple that are going from I Am Cycling, who of course closed. So Matthias Frank goes over to AG2R, whilst Roger Kluger goes over to Orica Green Edge. And there's one more as well, which I've forgotten. Let's just pause for a moment whilst we uh, check the script. Uh, I got them all. Hey, oh, the Schleck! My bounce of a line at the end. And also, Frank Schleck leaves Trek Sega Freighter to join his brother Andy in retirement. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot that great line that I wrote. Yeah, never mind. You know what time it is, lads? No, what time is it? It's time for GCN's Wattage Bazooka! <laughs> Could be the longest GCN show ever. <laughs> right, first up, it is, of course, the Pro Wattage Bazooka. And this week, we've decided that it is going to be awarded to Animiek Van Vluten. Now, clearly, she did not manage to get a race result, but she was on for that gold medal, wasn't she? Until that, that horrific that crash. Like that. Yeah, she was on fire. So, fair play, Animiek. You may not have an Olympic gold medal, but hopefully, a Wattage Bazooka may. Yeah, it's a great consolation prize. Yeah, yeah, get well soon thing. as well. Get well soon as well. Absolutely, yeah. Now, the amateur or viewer wattage bazooka goes to Dr. Rachel McKinnon. Now, she was racing last week at the Crossroad Classic. He hit a peak power of 1,354 watts. And Whoa. that, in the sprint... Was that better than your one the other yeah, week as well? Yeah, yeah, it was. Whoa. In the sprint, anyway, that was enough to give a victory, which, of course, meant that she was wearing the leader's jersey on stage two. So Fantastic. very, very well done. That's some right power there, isn't it? That's yeah. seriously good. If you've got any nominations for next week's viewer um, What Is Bazooka, then you can just use this hashtag on various forms of social media. All the platforms. Um, hashtag What Is Bazooka. Hashtag What Is Bazooka. Once more this week, Dom has actually gone for a tweet and a post from Instagram. Oh, when's he going to throw a Snapchat in? I don't know. Throw never know. It's it's Snapchat. Well, this is from Brent Butwald, so he's one of the US cycling team. Over there in Rio. Basically, where's Waldo? 
at Taylor Fleming <laughs> at McDonald's in the Rio Athlete Village. Seriously. That is there actually he is quite in the funny. Back. I know. Yeah, there's Waldo. He's not standing on a, an orange crate, he's actually that tall. Yeah, he is huge, isn't he, Taylor Fleming? He towers over me. Some moustache. Uh, the other tweet we kind of mentioned earlier, it's from Dan Craven, but not from Dan Craven, from his partner Colin. Hmm. It says, hello amigos, I'm in the breakaway, or trying to be at least. I that did, was very clever, wasn't it? I did look at those and think, I thought he'd got off and was back. I thought, he's got back to the village quick. Yeah, I, I thought, amazing. like, is he pre-programmed a tweet based on gambling that he's going to be in the breakaway? I, he did try hard to get in the break, hats off to him. I they thought, yeah, I thought he He'd um, scheduled his tweets. Yeah, I did, yeah. But he acquitted himself well in those early stages, I he thought. Certainly did. Fair play, Dan. Time now for comment of the week. And these first two came underneath your video, Sai and Matt, about how to say hi on your ride, which I really enjoyed, actually. You're a rider! I can't believe it! Oh, oh, man. <laughs> we'll have a hug later. Don't run uh, by. First Stay one by. came from Martin Sneep, who says, I challenge you to say hi in the Amsterdam morning rush hour. Especially if you live in Bath, that's, England. That's when you write uh, hello on your palmy hand, isn't it? We've we, never we've had that. handlebars. That's right, it's right around one hand. Meanwhile, Ed Cox said, ironic, because I cycled past Cy the other day this in the great. Mendips and I got no hi. I wondered if he heard the Sorry. rude word that I called him. Yeah, mate. Knob. Well, well you got to save yourself. Well, I knew this was going to happen because, like, sometimes, you got your head down, you're doing a froomey, you're looking at your power, and you suddenly notice that someone's just ridden past down the hill the other way, it's and you're like, oh, crabs. I should have said hello. Crabs. Crabs. <laughs> you know not say crabs? Anyway. You never say crabs. So, so I, anyway, a belated hi. hi. I've said crabs. And next time I will definitely down say the beach. hi. Oh. Uh, I've got this one, which is, I think it's one of the best comments I've read for quite a long time. I've been with the channel in three years now. Uh, this is underneath Top 5 Trends in Cycling, presented by myself. It's from Yujival Chauhan. Content aside, Matt's excellent skills as a presenter makes this video just, oh, so brilliant. It was four and a half minutes that were really just one long moment. How smooth was that presentation? I just read that completely wrong. Yeah, you did. That, that was that's very ironic. Smooth. <laughs> Maybe we've got some did, outtakes. So, yeah, did that video that's one and a half minutes long, did you do that all in one take? Over the quality of the ride we have, oh, which means us as the consumers. The bike industry is developing. No, it's not. Now it turns out that. Now zip. Oh, that doesn't make sense. That was That's why we've adopted the term endural. I can't. I can't see me writing. I'll have to take it back and write it on even bigger. If you haven't done so already, please tell your mates. So do that again. That was one more time. One more time. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Smooth. smooth. Nice so work, smooth, yeah. Matt. Right, one last comment, and this one is from underneath the first look at the new and rather lovely Orbea Orca. It's another one from Martin Sneep. Oh, that's a Probably first. He's on fire. Two in one Sneaked week. It. Nice, you captured all of the British summer in one video. Nice bike as well. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice summer whilst it lasted, wasn't it? It was a quite a lovely day. Uh, right, finally, underneath Roma Bardet's bike. There's another one. It's carving at Sonny Lee. So, Dan, be careful. Your 30 centimetre guns are going to break that seat post. It's an optimistic 30, isn't it? I can nearly actually reach my thumb and my finger around there. Yeah. Well, right one's bigger, isn't it? On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's three ways to get you stronger on a bike. One of the key things that a strong cyclist will have is a large aerobic capacity. So to you and me, that means being able to go fast for long periods of time, never missing a turn on the front of the chain gang, or being able to sit at the head of your local group ride. For long periods of time. On Thursday, it's our top five car and bike collaborations. Mm. Friday, as per usual, is Ask GC Anything, while Saturday's pro bike is Paul Voss's Argon 18. Yeah, Sunday, Tom Last takes us around the headquarters of Trek Whoa. over in the USA. Yeah, that should be cool. And then on Monday, we've got a multi tool video, which presumably features all of us presenters. Top band. See what you did there. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget, or we should remind you, that we've got some extra specials coming out for you as well. We've pushed the boat out on this one. We sent Matt out to a track with four other rides so that he can explain some of the key Olympic track events to you. <laughs> Massive crash. I'm not sure that's a reminder. I think that might be the first they've ever heard of it. Probably was, yeah. Mm. I just said the wrong word. It's time now for Extreme Corner. La Lads, before we do Extreme Corner, I couldn't help but notice your wonderful new t-shirts. Well, where'd you get those from? Well, yeah, you might be thinking, God, that guy's looking sharp this week. Well, I got mine from shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. 
Is that mint? Yeah, and that's charcoal grey. Oh, right. Yeah, and if you're wondering, mine's sapphire and lime. And this one, this isn't actually new, but the stocks were so depleted after awarding our washes bazookas to such luminaries as um, Steve Cummings and uh, Chris Froome that they sold out. But now, and pizza gone, now these are fully back in stock and mm. available to purchase. Oh, yeah. Good. Right then. So it is now time for Extreme Corner. And we have got Fabio Vidmer, Innsbruck is my playground. Let's get together and be as one. That was impressive. That's yeah, pretty good. Worthy of Extreme Corner, I think. Now, for riding of a different kind, I wouldn't imagine that uh, that gentleman would be saying hi whilst doing such dangerous tricks. But if you're out on your bike and you see a fellow cyclist, don't ride by, say hi. And for a video on six ways on how to do that, click just up here. Yeah, just like how I do every time I ride. Or to see how to get your max sprint power. If you've been inspired by this week's Wattage Bazooka winner, then click just down there and you get through to a video where we tell you how. Mm, and subscribe to the channel. All you've got to do is click on the globe. It's absolutely free. And if you liked it, give it a like. There's a little symbol down below. And to purchase GCN swag, just like this, click about here. <laughs>